everyone, I'm Eva LaRue, and this is Chicken Soup for the Soul's Animal Tales. On this episode, you can talk to the animals, and some of them might even talk back. How some very intelligent birds communicate with sound. Peaches is a really smart animal, so he can learn all kinds of vocalizations. And they tell him to do three tasks. Kids improve their reading skills by sharing stories with shelter cats. I feel good when I read to the cats. Plus, yay, good job. Our quote is changing lives one ride at a time and exactly what it is. We put them on the horse and they become a different person. It's time to celebrate amazing animals and the incredible people who go above and beyond to love and protect them. From the cutest of critters to the most majestic wildlife, we'll meet animals that enrich our lives and be inspired by the enduring bond between people and the animal kingdom. This is Chicken Soup for the Soul's Animal Tales. Brought to you by Chicken Soup for the Soul Pet Food. Can you think of an animal that's highly social, undeniably beautiful, and, oh yes, loves to sing? The magnificent macaw is a multicolored bird with a multitude of skills. Take a look at some of these winged creatures and their dedicated caretakers in Moore Park, California. Welcome to America's Teaching Zoo! Wee! America's Teaching Zoo is home to the exotic animal training and management program here at Moore Park College. Our mission is to give a broad education in how to safely and humanely work with wild animals. Can you rise up? Good girl. Today, these zoo students are excited to work with some of nature's most glorious winged creatures. The animals are as important to teaching the students as we are. It surprises me how much that I'm not training them. They're really teaching me about their species and how to take care of them. The special birds inside this aviary needed extra care after struggling in the wild or in a domestic environment. 29 of them have been rescued and now happily call this loving zoo home. Let's meet some of this vibrant flock. This is Rox the Scarlet Macaw. Yeah. She's 31 ah. years old and she was a former pet. Ah. Scarlet macaws are found in South America, ah. and they have zygodactylous feet. She has two toes in the front and ah. in the back that helps her grip onto trees in the rainforest. Ah. With her dynamic color and a cacophony of animals squawking and talking, it's no wonder they call it a pandemonium when she and her friends fly together. Rox isn't the only social bird in the aviary. Meet Peaches, a 21-year-old Moluccan cockatoo who wants everyone to know his name. Peachy, 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 peachy. Peachy, They're from the Moluccan Islands. He's here because he was a surrendered pet. Peaches is a really smart animal, so he can learn all kinds of vocalizations. This chatty creature knows exactly how to get what he wants. <laughs> yes, I see you. So that's him just trying to get our attention because he's... He just really likes um, knowing that I'm focusing on him rather than other people. They're uh, very social, but they typically only bond to uh, select few people or birds if they're in the wild. But here at the zoo, students have learned an easy way to bond with peaches. By teaching the animal to come to the target and to follow the target, that gives us a way to communicate to the animal, I want you to come this way, or I want you to stand here. Target. Good boy. Peaches is also bonded with a stunning 22-year-old military macaw from Mexico named Kylie. Are you excited? Go bird! Her scientific name is Ara Militaris. She has become blind in her left eye, uh, so I do what I can to bring her out um, as often as possible. Can you wave? Go bird! <laughs> Macaws are so smart, and they're also very independent. So I could not get Kylie out to do anything that she didn't want to do. Are you afraid of heights? Ah! Go bird! It's time to meet a beautiful Catalina macaw named Salsa, the only free-flighted macaw in the zoo. He actually doesn't have a true scientific name because he is a hybrid species. So you actually have to put both scientific names of both species together. Ara, Ariana, Ara Macau. He's bred between a scarlet macaw like rocks and a blue and yellow macaw. So that's what gives him his unique and beautiful coloration. You can see those wings. 
He's not as heavy as you think. Um, birds actually have hollow bones, so he weighs about two pounds, um, but he does have very sharp claws. In the wild, intelligent and highly social birds like salsa flock and forage together. So here at the zoo, learning to communicate with people through trained behaviors is crucial for this 31-year-old parrot's health and well-being. His two biggest talents are vocalizations and flying. Salsa, are you a dog? <laughs> are you a watchdog? <laughs> are you a pirate? Uh, Salsa, is it funny? <laughs> Salsa is definitely eager for his favorite part of the day. Ready to go fly? Much like we take our dogs and horses on walks, we take our birds out to fly. It's a form of exercise. It's a form of enrichment. Good bird. Macaws are certainly entertaining birds, but you'd better think twice before making one your pet. You can live up to 80 years. That beak that you see can crush up to 700 pounds, so she could break a broomstick in half if she wanted to. Animal caregivers say macaws and other parrots are frequently abandoned by their owners. But under the right care, these incredible animals have so much to teach us. Even though they're all different, we have something in common with every single one of them. And as long as we can realize that, it just makes protecting them that much easier. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. I always tell people, if you want to see gorgeous birds like Salsa, come visit them here at the zoo. Bye, Beachy. Good boy. can purr their way into your heart. But at one animal shelter in Pennsylvania, caregivers have discovered that some felines have a talent for making young readers feel confident. It's an unexpected bonus that benefits everyone involved. At this amazing animal shelter in the Pennsylvania countryside, you'll see something unusual. Kids are reading books to cats with astonishing results. They tell who do to do three tasks. We are an open admission shelter, which means that we don't turn any animals away here in Brooks County because you never know when an animal needs us. Like many other shelters, dedicated staff and volunteers rescue, rehabilitate, and nurture all kinds of animals waiting to find their forever homes. As of right now, we can house about 60 dogs here at the shelter and about 100 cats. The animals here depend on human kindness, but it turns out the animals have something special to give back to. A former employee's son was having some difficulties with reading and she thought to bring him in one day and have him read to the cats to work on his reading skills. And it proven to be very effective for him and a very positive impact on the cats as well. And it just kind of took off from there. From that day forward, Book Buddies was born. Cats don't care if a child stumbles over a few words, and reading aloud helps shy or underachieving youngsters get the practice and confidence they need. Not to mention, plenty of cat cuddles. I feel good when I read to the cats because I get to pet them and read. I will, would not eat them anywhere. Sean didn't really know how to read before he started coming here, so coming and reading to the cats helped Sean uh, just learn how to get better at reading and he was more excited about it. Cats are the ideal pet for our Book Buddies program. It really helps children to come out of their shell and build up their self-esteem and confidence while reading in a non-judgmental environment. And you can walk into the cat colonies and see the kids will put down their book and just start playing with the cats, which is also very good for both of them. I've been coming here for like two years. It's fun interacting with the cats because I get to cuddle and have fun and relax with the cats. Sunny really didn't like reading at first. She was really shy about it, especially in front of people. When she got more confident reading with the cats, she was able to do it, so she did it well. When I first came here, I felt like I was an okay reader, but now it makes me build my self-esteem. Before I came here to read to the cats, I didn't really like reading other than reading in school. But like when I started to come here to read to the cats, it made reading like a whole lot better. I have to say her grades have improved tremendously since we started coming here and volunteering at the ARL. Book Buddies builds independent reading skills, but it also builds a special kind of creature compassion. I think it's really important to start at an early age with giving back, and I've seen these children come in and really put their all into these animals, wanting to visit them every day, and I really think it's setting them up to have a very bright, positive future and to give back to the community as a whole. Before I like, started to came here, I was like really sad, and I didn't really want to leave my room or go to school or anything, so when I started coming here, I started to feel a lot happier and want to do stuff. 
We have a lot of awesome kids who are now asking for supplies for the animals at our shelter, opposed to them getting gifts for themselves for their birthdays that they bring in. I feel the way that a community treats their animals is a reflection on the community as a whole. They have feelings, they have emotions. It takes a village to do what we do, and we are fortunate that we have a village behind us. A visit to the vet with Dr. Quan Stewart is brought to you by Chicken Soup for the Soul Pet Food. Taking care of a dog or a cat is a big job. Just like us, animals have physical and emotional needs. And sometimes a visit to the vet is just what the doctor ordered. My name is Kaya and this is Bingo. He's a schnauzer poodle, but we like to call him a schnoodle. He has these eyes that stare into your soul and love you completely. He's kind of my best friend, and today we're coming in to check up on his heart. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm here with uh, Bingo for Dr. Stewart. Great, uh, just sign in right here. He has a heart murmur, and he's also not taking his meds, so I need help on what to do. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Stewart. I'm Kai, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. And this is Bingo. This is him. Hey, buddy. How old is he? 13. I love animals, and obviously if you own a pet, you love them too. We want to see them live as long as they can, and to do that, it's important to get them in to the veterinarian. Tell me a little bit about him. Well, he's got a heart condition. He has heart murmurs. So he's had this heart condition for how long? Uh, eight months. Okay. Let me give Bingo a little exam. I want to listen to his heart, of okay. course. What a good boy. I want to listen here to this murmur, so I can hear a pretty significant murmur which is sort of a abnormal swishing of blood in the chambers. So we grade heart murmurs on a scale of six. And Bingo's murmur was at a four, which is pretty significant, which means I can hear it very easily. The lungs are clear, which is a, a good sign. What exactly does it sound like? Well, it's interesting. It sounds sort of like a swishing, like, a, a, like water going back and forth. And I shouldn't hear that. I should hear sort of a nice, crisp heart sound. But when I hear this whoosh, 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 it immediately tells me we have heart disease. Wow. Do you want to take a listen? Yeah. All right. So they go in this way, and I'm going to put it over the left side of the heart, which is where the murmur is strongest. Oh, wow. You really do hear like a swish. Like instead of just like a regular heartbeat, it's just like a. Yeah, you hear that, don't you? That, wow. That is the sign, unfortunately, of an inefficient heart. It's a progressive disease, so there is no cure for it. We can only manage it. And he's on meds, and that's been going well? Uh, he's having a hard time taking them, and uh, I've been thinking about putting it in grapes, and yeah. giving it to him to see if he'll eat it. Yeah, so quick tip, I would avoid grapes. Grapes can be toxic to some dogs, grapes and raisins. Oh, wow. Really common food items in your house that most people aren't aware are toxic. Grapes and raisins, onions, mushrooms, Nutmeg, xylitol is another one. It's a sugar substitute for candy and sugarless gum. Obviously, we know about chocolate. Is chocolate poisonous too? Chocolate is poisonous. It's probably one of the more toxic common food items, so absolutely no chocolate in any form. Uh, dark chocolate is the most poisonous. Safe treats are cheese, lunch meat, turkey. Are there any specific foods he should be eating now that he's getting older? So we just want to make sure that he's on a balanced diet for his age. He should be on a mature diet. Uh, so I'll make sure that you get a sample on your way out. And you let me know if he likes it. Perfect. Let's just keep an eye on um, any signs of breathing issues or coughing. OK. That's a potential sign that there's fluid backing up into his lungs, that his heart disease is getting worse. He has his heart condition, and I want to make sure he stays on his medication, and that he gets it daily. But when Kaya mentioned that she was thinking about giving his medication in a grape, I made sure to mention to her that grapes, raisins, onions, mushrooms, a few other common items are toxic to dogs. I'm glad that he let me know. So now I'm going to start either putting his medication in some cheese or mixing it in with his wet food. He looks good. It was nice meeting you. You too. Thank yeah. you. Bingo, it was nice meeting you. You can go home now. You were the perfect patient. <laughs> After today, I'm actually feeling way more informed about Bingo's medical conditions and what I can do at home to help him. Thank you. Of course. Have a nice day. You too. A healthy, happy pet makes a healthy, happy home. Even though they can't communicate with words, animals have a way of teaching us to cope with our emotions. And it doesn't hurt when the animal is as big as a horse. 
and just as huggable. Here's an equine therapy story that will touch your heart. There's something about the horses that do heal. I really believe if they could take on your burdens and your troubles and your pain, they would. These horses are part of a therapeutic riding program in Auburn, California called Horses for Healing. We're a therapeutic riding center for adults and children with special needs. Our quote for Horses for Healing is changing lives one ride at a time, and exactly what it is. We put them on the horse and they become a different person. Diana Welsh's daughter, Sedona, has been in the saddle since she was three years old. Yay, good job. She's had a lot of traditional therapies like physical therapy throughout the years, but without horseback riding, she wouldn't be where she's at today. Push, push, push. She's 10 years old now. She's autistic. She's also nonverbal and she has low muscle tone. So she was a very late walker. She didn't walk until she was around five independently. She's so much more comfortable with movement now. I think a lot of that is riding a horse and having her do different positions on the horse. She can, you know, move her hands and figure out, okay, I need to put my hand here in order to swing my leg over. If you knew her five years ago, you'd be absolutely amazed. You did it. You did it. People say, oh, you're just sitting on a horse. But anybody who's a rider will tell you, you do not just sit on a horse. If you just sit on the horse, you're not gonna be sitting there very long. You have to work to stay on a horse. Dr. Christine Korn knows firsthand the positive effects a horse can have on children. We're working to get him ready for horseback riding. See how straight he's sitting? They're building strength. They're building postural control. They're building stability and strength in their arms and their legs. So they are working very hard. For Meyer Zumwalt, who has cerebral palsy, being on a horse makes him feel like he's walking. The way the horse moves, it simulates our walking. And so in his hips and in his pelvis, he's getting that benefit as if he were walking. When you create new abilities, what happens is his self-esteem begins to build. They come across totally different. Meyer loves it. He absolutely loves it. It gives him a sense of self-worth and pride. He sees himself as a cowboy. His face just shines, because it is pure joy. You can just see the pride on her face, and it just kills you. <laughs> you know, it's priceless. Yay! Good job, yeah. We'll be right back with more encouraging words from our friends to animals. Thanks for spending some time with us. I'm Eva LaRue, and we'll see you next week for more inspiring stories on Chicken Soup for the Soul's Animal Tales. And remember, always be good to animals. See you next time. You're never too young to volunteer. Get out there, walk a dog, cuddle with the cats, and really get involved at a young age, and continue to do that while being in school. What I always tell young children that want to go into this field, or really any field, is to just never give up. It wasn't easy getting here, and I got told no quite a few times, and I also failed, but I got up more times than I failed, and that's why I'm here, and it's really been worth it. As a human population, we have a responsibility to look out for the creatures on this planet, and of course that goes for our pets. We have a responsibility to provide a good home, and healthcare, and love, and in turn, I think you get it back tenfold.